What is the obstacle to rebuilding the subway system? It is the money, honey. That's what it is about. The only realistic option is congestion pricing. We have to get it done. We have to get it done next year. I need your help. That was Governor Andrew Cuomo making the argument that congestion pricing is the only way to pay the high cost of fixing the New York City subway system. Cuomo, who has long called for the city to, quote, pay its share for the MTA, now says that that idea is unrealistic and has promised to make congestion pricing one of his top priorities. So does that mean that congestion pricing is finally coming to New York City and that our frustrations over the collapsing subway system may soon be over? Joining us now with answers is Jimmy Vilkind, who covers New York politics for The Wall Street Journal and has been reporting on this story. Jimmy, welcome back to the program. Happy to be here. Uh, so, Jimmy, for those of our viewers who may not be familiar with congestion pricing, I wonder if you could just start by giving us a brief explanation of what it entails. Well, it's an idea that is not necessarily new and that has been implemented in other cities around the world, including London. Essentially, drivers who enter the most congested part of a city, its central business district, will have to pay a fee for that privilege. Uh, the idea is twofold. On the one hand, you raise money to invest in mass transit improvements, invest in other means of transportation to make it easier to go around. And two, you deter some people from driving in, right. especially at peak hours when the city streets are the most clogged. So, you know, you say this has been along for, uh, around for a long time. It's been around for a long time in New York. In fact, it's been on somebody's agenda for at least the last 10 years, but now it's in the governor's agenda. And that's serious, is it? That's right. So the governor first sort of said that the time has come for congestion pricing in 2017, after the so-called summer of hell when subway service really began to noticeably falter. Uh, after that, he convened a panel called the Fix NYC panel. It issued a report early in 2018 recommending a congestion fee on drivers entering Manhattan south of Central Park, uh, recommending a surcharge on four hire vehicles like Ubers, Lyfts and taxi cabs on trips that start and end in that part of Manhattan, and a host of other enforcement measures to do things that would help ease the flow of traffic throughout the city. What didn't happen last year was a concerted legislative push by the governor during the legislative session. Okay, so, you know, uh, the cost of fixing the subway has been estimated to be approximately $40 billion over the next 10 years. How much of that will be covered, realistically, with the revenues from congestion pricing? It's all going to depend on the exact shape of the proposal and of the legislation, uh, whether or not a proposal includes money for the city to maintain the East River bridges, like the Brooklyn, Manhattan, and Williamsburg bridges, whether or not a proposal includes lowering tolls on bridges in the outer boroughs, perhaps the Verrazano Narrows right. Crossing, which has been uh, a political balancing right, act done to try and win support in some of these regions. But the estimate is that about a billion dollars a year could be generated net for the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. If you bond that out, you could generate a good deal of money, but still not all of the 40 billion you would need to fund the fast forward plan, which is now being pushed by Andy Byford, yeah. the president of New York City Transit. Well, you know, New Yorkers from Long Island, from the outer boroughs or from the suburbs who rely on their cars to get to commute to the city. I mean, they've been typically and understandably the, the most strongest force against congestion pricing. It's the reason they're the reason why it, it died 10 years ago when Bloomberg tried to pass it or try to, to, to make it happen. Um, is the governor going to have better luck with the state representatives of the suburbs and the outer boroughs this time around? Well, we'll see. Uh, there are several things the governor can do to build support uh, in the legislative process. One thing he could do is make a congestion pricing proposal part of his budget. The state budget has to be adopted by April 1 each year. And the way the law is set up, the governor has a great deal of power over deciding what gets put in the spending plan and what doesn't get put in the spending plan. Uh, there have been court decisions that have really strengthened his hand in that process. So if the governor decides, as he did with other policy proposals in recent years, like raising the minimum wage, if the governor decides to put a congestion pricing plan into that spending proposal, he could essentially force lawmakers to vote on it, along with more popular measures like 
approving school aid increases. Um, so as I said in the introduction, you know, for a long time, uh, the governor has been calling for, for equal share of the expenses of fixing the subway system between the state and the city. He's now abandoned that idea. Why? Well, it uh, hasn't gotten him much voice. Um, <laughs> and also, you know, I, I think the governor's statement is a recognition that he controls the MTA after some previous attempts where he tried to shift blame and, and claim that he didn't really have control of the authority that operates mm -hmm. the subways uh, and, and recognize that he needs to solve this problem. So advocates are certainly saying that he needs to take ownership and they have been heartened by his latest comments. All right, we got about 15 seconds. Is this going to pass next year? And are we going to see congestion pricing in New York City next year? I think the biggest onus is on Governor Cuomo. That's what advocates say. That's what lawmakers say. If he puts together a package, if he employs his political skills, it may happen. If not, not. <laughs> okay. All right, Jimmy. Well, we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks. Always a pleasure to be here.